What up, gang? Alain Carolina, Drop Hot Time coming at you. It is Monday morning. I hope everybody's doing well today. Week 9 of college football is in the books. And as promised yesterday, I'm going to do a recap for you. I was going to do that yesterday afternoon, but late in the afternoon, I fell asleep. And I drooled all over myself. And then I woke up, and after I got my wits about me, I realized it wasn't long before we had to do our podcast. So my apologies, but better late than never. Week 9 didn't feature a ton of great games, but it did feature some ranked-on-ranked matchups and something else that we're noticing a ton of in college football right now. The um, backup quarterback is having to come into play for a lot of these teams. We're seeing some injuries across the board. Some of these folks have come in and done a serviceable job. Some of them have done better than the starter. A lot of them, though, have not done a real good job. We're going to talk a little bit about every one of those. We'll touch on it while we're here. But before we get into all of that, if you're new around here, give a little tiny bit of thought to staying true around here by subscribing to the Carolina Jackpot channel. Click the bell for the notifications of any time I post a video. Come around here all the time if you want. Uh, we do college football stuff here all the time. We have a heck of a good time doing it. So, uh, with that being said, these are in no particular order either. I just jotted down a bunch of random games that I wanted to talk about. But uh, Texas 27 24 over Vanderbilt uh, in a game that really was not as close as this score indicated. Uh, Texas got clearly the better team uh, in this matchup. Um, Vanderbilt uh, did what Vanderbilt does. They hung tough. and um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know where they're finding all this moxie and strength this year. Probably off the uh, legs and arm of that quarterback, Diego Pavia, who I affectionately call San Diego Pavia. Um, yeah, the guy uh, just continues to be gritty. Continues to make big plays. Um, just puts his body on the line, really. I mean, the guy gets beat up a lot during these games, but every time he goes in the injury tent, it's like a jack in the box. He pops right back out of it. You know, he's not staying in there for long. Gets his little bit of treatment, and then he's, he's ready to get back out on the field. And I, if he gets hurt, I, I, I don't know what really happens to Vanderbilt for the rest of the season. They're sitting here now at 5-3. and three. Um, Texas. Just, I mean, kind of an, an underwhelming performance. I mean, they do clearly look better, part of the better team, but I mean, just kind of didn't deliver a knockout blow. So, uh, not a great game from there either. But I mean, I mean Texas keeps on rolling. I still have just the one loss right now. Um, are they? You know, I don't know. I, do they? Are they belong in like the top five in the country. I don't know. I don't know if they do or not. I think they're probably, I think they're probably a top ten team. I think they fall somewhere between six and ten for me. Just a lie test. I, they're missing a little something. Obviously, we saw that against Georgia. Um, Notre Dame fifty-one fourteen over Navy in one of the noon games. There, Navy just, I mean, no chance from the get-go. Turn the ball over six times, and uh, Notre Dame just steamrolls them. Um, you know, is Marcus Freeman a, a playoff coach? Uh, they're probably going to make it this year because they're probably going to win out. Um, toughest test, I believe, remaining on that schedule would be the home, or is it a home? No, it's a road matchup with the uh, the USC Trojans. I, I mean, I don't I don't see Notre Dame a lot of a lot of problems in that matchup either. Um, I think they will make the college football playoff just with the one loss to Northern Illinois. It's Notre Dame. I mean, they're they're going to get in if they can get them in. So I mean, and they're still they're a really good team. I mean, Navy was undefeated at this point. I mean, it's not like Navy was a pushover. I mean, they just went and totally dominated them. So you got to give Notre Dame their flowers for that one, don't we? Virginia Tech twenty one six over Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, um, one of the teams playing a backup quarterback there, Haynes King. Out for that game, and they played their backup Zach Pyron. Um, yeah, no, they, they scored six points. So, tells you all you need to know about him. 
not very good. Pissed me off at the end because I did have Georgia Tech cover the spread in that game, and they could have actually covered the spread with a backdoor cover and touchdown, and, of course, he throws an interception with about a minute left in the game. So, Virginia Tech 21-6 over the uh, Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Just not a lot of offense there from the uh, from the, the rambling wreck, and Virginia Tech does just enough to, to win that ball game. Uh, Ole Miss 26-14 over Oklahoma. Oklahoma continues to have problems. However, they did, however, seemingly played a little bit better in this game than they had the previous two where they got blown out by Texas and blown out by my South Carolina Gamecocks. They were actually ahead 14-10 at halftime. Well, that said, Ole Miss didn't play real good in this game. Uh, they decided to play a little bit of football in the second half and uh, – Outscored Oklahoma 16 to nothing, but they don't look the part of a playoff team either. Of course, they look like world beaters against South Carolina, but that's that's our fault. The ones that let them do it. Uh, Oklahoma and Jackson Arnold, his numbers weren't horrible. It was 13 and 22, but he only threw for 185 yards. Sacked nine times. Nine times. How bad is Oklahoma's offensive line? I mean, we knew they were going to have some kind of issues going into the season because they had some transfers off that unit. <laughs> now, I, I, I don't know. Are we starting to see now maybe why they had a bunch of transfers? I mean, I don't, I, and I don't know if they changed up coaches there. I have no idea if they changed O-line coaches uh, in the offseason. I know they do have a new offensive coordinator, or they did, until they fired him. Uh, that was Seth Luttrell. He's not there anymore. They fired him after the game against my Gamecocks, but geez, I, they, they may have switched offensive line coaches as well. I don't know, but everybody left, and uh, it's uh, this is not good. Not good at all. 18 sacks, 18 they've given up in the last two games. I know South Carolina's offensive line is awful. Oklahoma's may be worse. Oklahoma's offensive line may be worse than ours. Um, Indiana just keeps winning. 31-17 over Rutgers. They're a team that played a backup quarterback and didn't have any problems. Excuse me, it's not Rutgers they played. It was Washington. Indiana played. Still hadn't cracked the top ten yet, and they're, they're sitting here undefeated. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, they, I guess they need to beat somebody. Have, have they beaten a ranked team yet? I, I don't know if they have. I don't think that they have. I don't think they have beaten a ranked team yet. That's probably what's holding them back a little bit. Uh, Penn State 28-13 over Wisconsin. Once again, uh, I kind of doubted James Franklin, and I thought that they might go on the road here and stub their toe, but they didn't. Uh, they just keep on winning. Uh, now the big showdown with Ohio State looming this weekend. It's a home game. Ooh, it's going to be a noon game, too. It'll be a nooner. Think that has anything to do with uh, the powers that be? Uh huh. I do. Yeah, I don't think they want to have that game at night there at Penn State. Why? They want to prop up Ohio State. Not too hard to figure out. But anyway, um, 28-13 over Wisconsin. Actually, kind of came back. Wisconsin was up earlier in that game, uh, but Penn State. Oof! In your lane, buddy. Drew Aller banged up a little bit in that game, so status is going to be kind of questionable, I think, for Saturday. But I'm sure if he can go, he'll go. Yeah, uh, he, he's going to get that San Diego Pavia treatment. 24-10, Auburn over Kentucky. Uh, man, Kentucky's program is just falling apart at the seams. Uh, they they are really um, they're they're really having a bad year. This is uncharacteristic of a Mark Stoops team and I I don't I don't I don't really know what the what the issue is here with Kentucky because uh, granted um, uh, other than when they played South Carolina I have not watched a whole ton of Kentucky football you know I watched that thing they had going on with Georgia where neither one of the teams wanted to win the game uh, but but other than that um, their games are hard to watch so I just don't watch much of them uh, this I do know. Uh, they were winning this game 10 to nothing at one point, and then they let Auburn storm back, scored 24 points in a row. Jarquez Hunter for Auburn, 
rush for like 280 yards. Man, he's feeling them oats, ain't he? Ain't that bro that a couple years ago, didn't he have a sex tape or something gets leaked out on Twitter? I think he did. I think he did. Must not be getting laid anymore. He's got the pent up frustration. Rushing for 275 yards against Kentucky. We let it out for sure. Uh, it, is this, does that have to do with anything with Mark Stoops, uh, you know, quitting uh, and, and leaving for Texas A&M at the end of last season? And then Texas A&M was like, no, nah, we don't want you. We want Mike Elko instead. I, I don't know. I, are the, the players not have respect for him anymore? I, who knows? I, I do know this. They need to stop going out and getting transfer quarterbacks. <laughs> they need to try to cultivate one of their own. And it does not seem like they're doing that. And it's not worked out well. I mean, Will Levis was there. Yeah, I mean, I guess he did an okay job. I mean, you know, South Carolina was one and one against him. Uh, but the, what, the, what they had the guy from NC State uh, last year, and then this year, uh, this Vandergriff. I mean, he's not not doing a real good job there. So I, I think you might want to try a different approach. Mark Stoops, a lot of people will say, is he on the hot seat? Is he going to... Not now, but going into next year, it might be kind of warm, you know, because he's kind of raised the expectations at Kentucky a little bit. So, uh, it'll be a little bit warm going into next year, but he's not on the hot seat yet. Uh, SMU 28-27 over Duke. Um, Duke misses out on a two-point conversion there at the end of the game, if they would have ended up winning that thing. Uh, SMU is, is continues to be undefeated in conference play, still with just the one loss to BYU. Um, they take on Pitt this weekend, so that's going to knock somebody out of ACC championship contention, uh, one would think. 28-9-27, um, Kansas State holds on and beats Kansas. Real good game there, Sunflower Showdown. Didn't watch a lick of it. Sorry. 34-23, Colorado beat Cincinnati. And Colorado's quietly, and I say quietly, uh, become a very good team this year. They're 6-2. and two. And as I alluded to last night on our podcast, I don't know if you guys have noticed it or not, but I've certainly noticed it. There's been a lot less silliness, a lot less ha-ha, a lot less look at me moments surrounding that program this year. I mean, you don't have stuff like Shadur Sanders going over to the Arizona State people and asking them what time it is and just silly stuff like that. Um, it's a lot quieter than what it has been at Colorado. It seems like they're actually focusing on football and they're doing pretty good. Uh, six and two. They beat Cincinnati by double digits. I had a feeling they would do so, and uh, and they did. Uh, and that was a late night game too. TCU 35-34 over Texas Tech. Yet another of a Big 12 game here where defense was was actually an option. I mean, you could play it if you wanted to, and neither team chose to play it. Apparently, TCU a ranked? No, they're not a ranked team. Iowa 40, Northwestern 14. You know, Iowa is sitting here now. I think they're 5-3. and three. You know, them finding an offense could actually become a dangerous thing. The problem is, I think their defense is actually taking a little bit of a step back this year. So, um, but they put 40 points up on the board. I think they beat Washington 40-16. to 16 a couple of weeks ago, and then they go out and beat Northwestern 40 to 14. So uh, they're running a rough shot over some of these uh, Big Ten foes. But it's interesting to see here what going forward what they can do. Uh, if they can continue to uh, execute at a semi-high level on offense, Iowa could be a pretty dangerous team, could be a player in the uh, Big Ten here going forward. Minnesota 48, Maryland 23. <laughs> Just blew them out, man. God. Put almost 50 burger up on Maryland. Don't have a whole lot on it. Glad to see Mike Loxley take a loss whenever I get a chance to. If you're not a Gamecock fan, you probably don't understand why we don't like them. But um, been some recruiting wars out there between Maryland and South Carolina. South Carolina kind of recruits the uh, DMV area pretty hard. And 
well, Maryland does too. And a couple of years ago, there was a guy, Joshua Barham, a linebacker who's from up in that area. And he kind of commit, he, he like he kind of led on that he was going to commit to South Carolina and he, he kind of dropped the leak that he was. And then he was like, sight. And he turns around and commits to Maryland right then and there. So kind of trolled Shane Beamer and them and made him look a little bit stupid. And I think Mike Loxley was kind of in on that. And so we don't like them. South Carolina and them have been in Twitter wars together. They're talking about how they're historic, how historically good they are at football and this and that. And then South Carolina fans will find screen grabs of like their games, like especially if they're playing on a Friday night or something with like 10,000 people in the stands there. Just, you know, it's just a turd of a football program, really. Uh, so it's good to see them lose a game whenever we get a good chance to do so. Uh, 38-9, Oregon, just monkey stomps, Illinois. Uh, this was never a contest that was in doubt, and me, like an idiot, and a lot of other people, took Illinois in that game to cover the spread. We thought they could uh, hang. Well, Illinois is still a, a good football team. They just, they're another one that doesn't have an offense um, to speak of. Now, you'll say, well, they scored 50 points against Purdue. Yeah. I mean, who, uh, how, how difficult is it to score 50 points, really, on Purdue? The, uh, a lot more difficult, I guess, or a lot more easier, I guess, than it is to score 50 on Oregon. So, I mean, they just they absolutely blow Illinois out 38-9 um, to nine and look every bit the part of a number one ranked team. Cal, 44-7 to seven over Oregon State. Man, the Beave is down bad. What happened to the Beave? I know they're not in a conference technically right now. They're kind of out there hanging out in the desert with uh, Washington State, just kind of waiting on somebody to pick them up. But, Lord, um, they're, them two are like the, the kids that, that forgot to get on the bus or got on the bus late. Now they're hanging out, waiting for their parents to come give them a ride to school. You know, Washington State is not playing bad football right now. Oregon State is 44-7. They lose to Cal. Uh, but, you know they lost their head coach Jonathan Smith. Uh, could have a lot to do with it. Um, Miami 36-14 winners over Florida State. Kind of a, a, a ho hum matchup there, and Miami just it seemed like kind of going through the motions in that one uh, against Florida State. It <laughs> wasn't a, uh, what a, a flashy victory. Didn't They just did what they had to do to win and just got on with their business there. It was kind of, it reminded a lot of people of the Clemson-Florida State game where, I mean, we never thought Clemson would beat Florida State by 50, and they didn't. Uh, Florida State is just now getting to where they just muddy and ugly games up. Um, so, I, you know, I, don't, I really don't know where we're going with them. At this point now, they're still sitting here with one win on the season. They're not making a bowl game. There was some outside chance that they could actually try to potentially win out and, and backdoor their way into a bowl game somehow, some way. Uh, but that's not even going to happen now at this point. So Florida State done for. They play North Carolina this week. That's going to be an interesting matchup also. West Virginia goes on the road, gets herself a win. 31-26 over Arizona. Is this enough to save Neil Brown? Is this guy going to get canned at the end of the season? He probably is. Yeah, it was on the hot seat before last year started, and they had a surprisingly really good year. What They won like nine games, won a bowl game, and blew out North Carolina. And then you know, this year has been kind of yeah, not, not so great for Neil Brown there. Uh, but the 31-26 win over Arizona, yeah, on the road. Arizona, not probably one of the more disappointing teams in college football this year. Um, you know, just have not been able to get it going offensively all year long. Uh, you know, this Noah Fafita, quarterback, before the season started, we were told how fun he was going to be to watch, how dynamic and fun this offense was going to be, and it's just been – it's been none of that. Um, West Virginia, though, I mean, definitely should be def – West Virginia should be a top 15 type team every year. Uh, they, they have the history there and the tradition 
to be a really good football program. They could be a really big, or, uh, not really big, what am I trying to say here? But uh, could be a really good draw there. And given the conference they play in now, especially with the exodus of Texas and Oklahoma, uh, West Virginia should be one of the top teams in that conference. No excuse for them not to be. So I think they'll move on from Neil Brown and try to find someone that's a little bit better of a fit uh, when the season's over with. But yeah, 31-26 over Arizona. Uh, LSU loses 38-23 to uh, Texas A&M. Uh, Carolina Jackpot was watching this. We kind of live streamed it, and then I kind of got sidetracked doing some South Carolina Gamecocks trivia with the chat group peoples. So I didn't pay as much attention to it as I probably should have. But A&M wins it 38-23, comes back in the second half, uh, and just uh, with quarterback Marcel Reed, and uh, just totally took apart the LSU defense. Um, LSU was up in this ball game, you know, and, and instead of trying to run some clock and, you know, try to be conservative and, you know, hold on to a lead, they wanted to go out and throw the ball all over the place. Yeah, maybe it's because they can't run the ball. I, I, I don't know. But uh, they dropped this game. So this is a bad loss for for LSU because this game was essentially a pick em, and this now saddles them with two losses, still only one loss in conference play. So if they could manage to win out somewhere, they'll need some help, but they could still potentially make an SEC championship game. But LSU drops this one here to Texas A&M. This is exactly the spot where I wanted the Aggies to be coming into Columbia this coming Saturday evening. I wanted to be sitting here with just the one loss and undefeated in conference play, uh, primed for a letdown spot there uh, against my Gamecocks. Uh, can South Carolina do it and strike the upset? Uh, I'm not counting on it. Um, you know, we've seen South Carolina struggle with the uh, dual threat quarterback in uh, uh, Jackson Dart, uh, and we've seen South Carolina when they come out focused and ready to play, kind of shut down the. Uh, dual threat quarterback in Alabama is Jalen Milrow. So, uh, which team comes to play here? They're off a of bye week. Last time they came out off a of bye week was the aforementioned Ole Miss game, and they look like absolute horse piss. So, we hope for a better performance this Saturday night against Texas A&M. They're surely going to need it. But I, all signs would point to Texas A&M sticking with Marcel Reed there at quarterback. Uh, Mike Elko seems to kind of like to play the quarterback hokey pokey where, you know, Connor Wegman will play for a while and then when he starts to play like crap, he'll put the other kid in and then when Reed plays for a while and he starts to look like crap, they'll put Connor Wegman back in and, well, you see where they're at right now. Um, so I feel like Marcel Reed will probably be getting the start there against the Gamecocks. Uh, but we'll just have to see. Uh, Ohio State 21, Nebraska. 17. Somehow, some way, uh, the Buckeyes find a way to get a victory there uh, in a game where, you know, that physically up front, they kind of got dominated by Nebraska a little bit. Well, not a little bit, a lot bit. And there, there's some issues there. I, I don't think that Ohio State is a national championship contender. I just don't. And with the, the, their lack of physicality, I think they're going to have some problems with Penn State in this matchup on Saturday afternoon. Um, we'll see how that one pans out, but uh, Matt Rule's team uh, drops a, a heartbreaker there in uh, the horseshoe in, in a game that they had every chance to win, but uh, Ohio State still gets the victory at the end. You know, he had a, a controversial targeting call against Ohio State, and the fans got mad. They started throwing stuff on the field, kind of like see, Texas starts an ec epidemic. Of people that are going to start throwing things on the field. Uh, it's just absolutely nuts. I know. Somebody in the comments said, so we're Carolina Jackpot. Game caught people threw uh, water bottles on the field seven years ago against Clemson. Yeah, they did. Students did. They threw water bottles at them. Yeah, they were dumb too. Uh, what can I tell you? 55 to 28 or 58 to 25. Can't read my chicken scratch. Either way, it was a blowout. Arkansas all over Mississippi State. I heard Arkansas wasn't a good team. That's what I was told. Uh, that's not true. And I actually took Mississippi State here to strike the upset. 
because we got lulled to sleep because Arkansas got dominated by LSU last week. So we thought, man, they missed, maybe they're not a good team. Well, maybe they are. I don't know. Maybe and Mississippi State has, has hung tough for three, four games in a row with good teams and covered spreads. So we thought, you know, finally it's, it's going to be time where they're going to strike an upset. Doesn't happen. Uh, Arkansas just absolutely dominates Mississippi State there from start to finish. Uh, East Carolina, 56-34 over Temple. Good to see East Carolina get back in the win column. They fired their coach, Mike Houston, uh, on last Sunday, and then they got a big win this Saturday. I actually made me Carolina jackpot some money. I actually took ECU and the points in that game. So that was one that I uh, scored on. BYU wins 37-24 over UCF. For some reason, BYU was an underdog going into this game. But uh, and UCF had not been having a very good season. I think they were 3-4. and four coming into this game. Uh, they lost to Florida. Terrible. The BYU gets the win there. They're still undefeated. Yet another undefeated team uh, that's got to lose at some point. We'll see what's going to happen there, how that shakes out. Maybe that's why they're marking some of these undefeated teams as an underdog, maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know because they, they, because they got to lose at some point. Who knows? Uh, Alabama, 34 nothing over Mizzou. Uh, I, this game was just a, an absolute domination here from start to finish as well. Al Alabama plays well offensively and defensively. Finally see their running backs, Jam Miller, uh, get going. Uh, scored a couple of touchdowns for Bama. Um, defensively played about as well as you can. They shut Mizzou down, uh, and they were playing with yet another backup quarterback, too, Mizzou was. Uh, Brady Cook came out there. He started this game uh, and he threw an interception uh, immediately and uh, then he exited the game and they bring in backup quarterback Drew Pine. Absolutely terrible. Threw like three interceptions and I thought Pine. I had not heard that name before Pine and I was like yeah. Now look at the stats. This guy's been playing college football for five years. He was a quarterback at Notre Dame a couple of three years ago, if y'all remember. He was the one in the game where I think it was Marshall that they lost to. Uh, if you'll remember, uh, their uh, offensive coordinator at the time, Tommy Reese, uh, in the press box, is like screaming at this dude on the headset. You can just like audibly read his lips as he cursed out uh, young Drew Pine over the headset. Uh, a, a total, uh, well... I'm not going to say it was a douche move because every coach does it. He just happened to get caught on camera and everybody was like, whoa, oh, oh, Lord. I mean, he was mean to his player. But anyway, I knew I knew heard that name. So apparently he's been not real good for a while. And I don't know why Mizzou uh, thought it was going to be any better. But, um, yeah, 34 nothing Alabama there with an the easy victory. They roll in Tuscaloosa and Baylor. Uh, Old Baylor, 38-28 beatdown on uh, Oklahoma State. Uh, I, I have no idea what has uh, – I'll put those little notes over there in the garbage since we won't need them anymore. I, I have no idea what's happened to Oklahoma State. And uh, here, you know, Mike Gundy, you know, his teams usually put – they've usually out, put out a lot better product than this. You know, got Ollie Gordon who came in as one of – thought to be the nation's top, if not top, running back, uh, and he's been nothing but that. So, um, uh, not sure if he's been banged up there or what. Uh, admittedly, that, that's not a team that I watch a whole lot of either. I just, you know, not being able to watch every game on a Saturday is, you know, it sucks because sometimes you want to talk about these teams, you can't talk about them with a whole lot of intelligence because you, you just don't watch a lot of their games. Because you can't, because everything comes on at once, and you've only got you know so many teams. I only have so much time that I can watch them. You know, there are you know college football YouTubers and, and YouTubers who, who do college football and other sports as well that can speak to other teams because they can go back and watch these games. You know, at later points during the week, and, and, and kind of give you a, a feel of what happened. Um, however. 
kind of doing this deal here so i don't i don't have a chance to do that but i'd like to but i can't anyway um that's about all i got to say about that guys that was week number nine in college football some big winners some big losers there who's carolina jackpot's big winners my Penn State still remaining undefeated, um, passing the test, passing the James Franklin test, if you will. That's Carolina Jackpot calling it the James Franklin test, where you uh, step on your own willy and do it. Didn't do it this time, so uh, good job there by them. Indiana, another team that just continues to roll, looked real impressive. Um, Colorado, we'll, we'll give them a, a team that looked really good too. Um, just continues to impress people. They finally settle down and start playing football, and it's paying off for them. Anyway, that's about all I got for you today, guys. I will talk to you folks later on. Appreciate you. Peace, and I'm out of here. Go Gamecocks. Ah, ah, ah.